Hello, everyone. Welcome to this DEI update, Debts, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. I'm James Milan, and I am with our Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, um, Jillian Harvey. Jill, good to see you again. Hi. Hi there. Um, welcome. And it's been a little, a little, a little while, including um, enough time to wrap up the this year's series of community conversations. Um, I think there were still two pending when we last spoke to you. So um, I think those have happened at this point. And um, if you can start by just giving us uh, your sense of how they went and uh, what you know, or you you and others have taken from them. Yeah. Um, so we had the housing conversation back in July. So that was who can live here, who decides and why. Um, so that was all centered around fair housing and particular to Arlington. It was a really wonderful discussion. If folks haven't had a chance to um, watch the recording, I suggest you do because it's paired really well. The presentations are also available because it was very informative. Um, our guest speakers were, were phenomenal in providing the education that I was looking to hope um, to have our participants get. Um, I definitely learned a lot as well, <laughs> but it goes really nicely with the Fair Housing Action Plan that was released right around the same time um, through the planning department. So all of that is on um, our webpage and the conversation was just really riveting and the questions that community members were providing were also really, um, I'd say thought provoking and kind of highlighting areas where folks can start to get involved with some of the conversations around housing. Um, the True Story Theater partnered uh, program that came after that also went well. I attended that and um, that was the following week. It was really interesting because a number of folks who were actually participating were new residents to Arlington. So for me to be able to actually hear what some of their initial feelings and perceptions of town were was really eye-opening for me um, that we've got folks moving in who are already feeling a sense of not quite knowing what to make of the town or feeling that it's not super diverse or there are areas that are segregated. Um, it was good to hear from folks and it's just kind of something for me to keep in mind as we're moving forward and trying to make some of those changes. Um, earlier this week, yeah, this week, Tuesday, um, we had the final conversation, um, which was about listening to differing perspectives and the powers of the power of symbolism. Um, I am really happy with the way the conversation went. Um, we did something a little bit different in trying to make it more engaging with our participants. So although it was still done as a webinar, um, we did a number of polls throughout the session. So we would bring up different images and have um, almost like an emotional scale to have folks, you know, vote on what that image, um, how it made them feel and react. And then we allowed for folks to actually raise their hand and we could promote them to speak and engage and dialogue back and forth with the panelists. Um, so lots of positive feedback about the way that that was done. And um, the conversations were really great. I mean, just, I was happy to see community members sharing their perspectives and opinions and asking questions of each other um, in a way that was not aggressive or stating that their opinion was right. But understand the whole point of the conversation was that there are different perspectives and in order to come to a place of understanding, you need to listen and not listen to react, but listen to understand. And I think that that really carried through the whole presentation. I think we hit the two hour mark and we definitely could have kept talking. Um, the panels were phenomenal and just the engagement from community members was really great. So I was really pleased with how that, um, that final conversation went. And I'm looking forward to, if we're staying in this virtual world, um, to continue to find ways to allow for more engagement in a way that's, I wanna say safe for everyone. I think everyone felt that um, the way the conversation went and the amount of interaction they got was satisfactory. Um, so with that, some of the symbols we touched upon, we went, we went really into some of the details of 
um, how original symbols are and how they've over time been, I guess, hijacked and turned into mm -hmm. negative or racist symbols. And so um, going through some of that history was also really helpful because again, we make assumptions of what we think when we see certain things and then learning a bit more about the history, you can start to understand why someone may use that symbol. Maybe it's not in a racist way, but it's because of their past history. Um, so that was just really great. And I'm excited for the upcoming um, bystander training with True Story Theater next week. Um, so that'll be kind of piggybacking off of this last conversation, um, giving folks some tools and training to be able to appropriately and safely and effectively intervene um, when they witness situations of bigotry or injustice or just a conversation that you don't think is quite right. Um, so that'll be next Tuesday and that will kind of be the recap for um, or the wrap up for the full conversation series. So we'll be sending out some information and a refresher on all of the presentations throughout the summer. Um, and I'm going to start planning for next year. <laughs> Great. And um, yeah, let's just clarify for folks because they may yeah. be seeing this at, at different times okay. <laughs> uh, that uh, next Tuesday, in this case, we're referring to uh, August 17th. Yes. Um, and that's going to be at seven, the True Story Theater event, 7 p.m. Is that right? Yes. Yep. Seven to nine. Okay. Great. Um, really nice description as well of, of how those conversations went. And, and really, I can't help but note that your, your, your enthusiasm and your excitement about that last conversation and how well it went in a number of different ways. I also just want to acknowledge that po possibly in part, that's because you, uh, on behalf of the town and of your office, have done these now for the last couple of summers and have probably learned uh, through the process of doing a lot of the other conversations, things that you brought to this one, as you said, you mentioned the interactive elements that you introduced um, and that will kind of, you'll keep going with and other kinds of things so that a, a really fruitful and productive and, and good, as you were saying, conversation, collective conversation can happen around some, frankly, some tough issues, as always. Um, and uh, so kudos to you um, and to uh, all of those who've contributed to put on, putting on this series of community conversations over a couple of years now, uh, because they just continue to get better as in more impactful, it feels like, um, and, um, and educational. So Yay for that, and we look forward again to the to next year's um, iterations uh, of, of these really important events. Mm. Um, but uh, I also want to move on to the fact that, you know, acknowledge another fact about your work, and that is uh, we end up spending probably an inordinate amount of our time uh, with you discussing uh, racism from structural racism to interpersonal reactions uh, to or uh, interactions in all kinds of ways and clearly it goes without saying that that's important enough topic for us to spend a lot of time on but your own work encompasses also work with the human rights commission and with the disability commission and diversity equity and inclusion as you and I were noting before we went on air it's an enormously expansive scope yeah. Of, uh, of, 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 of responsibility, basically. Um, so I understand that you on the ADA side, uh, and that is uh, in terms of work, your work with the Disability Commission, uh, that you attended a symposium, uh, I think last week. Mm -hmm. um, and can you just tell us about that and what you, what you took from from yeah. what sounds like a pretty intensive experience. <laughs> it definitely was. <laughs> um, so last week, uh, it was a four day um, national ADA symposium. So myself, um, Christina Kuhlman, our DEI admin and one of the members of the Disability Commission actually attended as well. Um, it was day long, <laughs> four days, um, but sort of working through a number of different topics uh, that all are related to the American Disabilities Act. And 
that's anywhere from compliance to best practices. Um, I learned about you know, sidewalk ramps all the way to how to make our playgrounds accessible. Um, and it's all, I'm really glad that I guess before I started, um, the town had already gone through the process of getting the um, ADA transition plan, all of that moving and we have that. And so for me, I am gonna be taking everything that I learned in the last week and um, looking ahead to see how we can start to use our plan and I can work with other departments and other key employees in town to start to um, continue our ongoing learning and how we can improve accessibility, not just physically, but other and barriers around communication and um, just instilling some best practices too. Um, although for me, I think the biggest takeaway was that improvements for ADA improvements actually are improvements for everyone. So <laughs> it's kind of the direction we need to go in, um, but it was a lot of information that I'm still processing and probably will be over the next couple of months um, to see how we can start to work with other groups, but also improve some of the um, plans that we have right now. Sounds sounds good, and um, I'm sure again we will see the fruits of that um, all around us uh, in in coming months and years. Um, you know, a staple of often of our these updates with you, but also updates that we do with other town officials uh, has to do with uh, the the need the continuous need for participation um, from mm -hmm. the community on a bunch of uh, different committees and boards. Uh, et cetera. And, you know, we have a rich uh, history and tradition of volunteerism in this town. So let's see if we can't drum up some volunteers uh, for some of the committee openings that you are aware of. Why don't you tell us what's going on in that area? Yeah. So we've got some openings um, on actually all the three commissions I work with directly. So our disability commission, the rainbow um, LGBTQIA plus commission, and the Human Rights Commission. So those have been open. We've received applicants. We're in the process of going through everyone who's applied right now, but they're gonna stay open um, throughout the, I wanna say the second week of September, um, because we wanna just make sure we're providing opportunities for folks who maybe have been out for the summer, folks getting back in. Um, we'll be sending the information out to parents and schools and um, we'll also be tabling at the farmer's market on September 8th. So more information will be physically available. You can talk to commissioners there if you're looking to find out more or just have questions or just wanna you know, check out a, a commission meeting, not even actually volunteer to be a commissioner, but, but or apply um, just to see what the commissions are doing. So we'll be able to, I think it'll be a nice day and um, time to see all of these groups working together and see what they have to offer. Um, but through that, we'll be looking to close the applications that second week of September get all of the interviews scheduled and then hopefully have some new commissioners on board by October. Great. So look for that table at the farmer's market on September 8th. I think uh, that's, that sounds fortuitous in that September is always in the, in the early part of September, always beautiful. Uh, it mm -hmm. feels like uh, here in New England and the farmer's market is a place that always draws plenty of, of, of folks. So uh, nice serendipity there. And let's hope that it, uh, that it results in, in some of these openings being scooped up. Um, all right, great. Anything uh, that we have uh, failed to mention that we should have, Jill? Hmm, I don't <laughs> think so. <laughs> um, it's just been after the, the community conversations wrapped up, I'm just looking to do some more active planning uh, for the year ahead. So I think things will be maybe a little quiet for a couple of weeks, but um, <laughs> just trying to get some planning done so that we can pump out some good stuff over the course of the year. <laughs> well, as you said that you think things could be a little quiet, uh, we couldn't see your hands, but I'm sure if we did, we would have seen those fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, we will check back in with you again. We hope in, and expect in September at some point. Um, and we really appreciate your time today. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, James. <laughs>
I have been speaking with Jillian Harvey, who is our Director of Diversity, Equity, Inclusion here in town. And um, this has been the DEI Update. I'm James Milan. We appreciate Jill's time as always, and we appreciate yours as well. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.